Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and a video sponsored by PCBWay.com. I've built quite a few projects from their website, shared projects. I've also designed quite a few, which have been a variety of successes. Some I definitely use more often than others, okay? So I just wanted to mention, remind you of the ones I use most commonly. You can download these from PCBWay.com. These are shared projects and one or two things which are work in progress. Before I do that, you might ask what's happening with the signal injector pen. I submitted all the Gerber files to PCBWay, plus a few other projects as well. They're all on the way now. So I'm awaiting that package from DHL. Should be here soon, so next month we'll get some of those built. Yeah, let's give them a try. Interested to see whose design works the best. I'm going to link these various projects here, the ones which we've built ourselves and tested. You might be interested in some of these. So this, you see me using this quite a bit. This is the Omnis Op Amp Tester. This tests single, dual, quad op amps and also comparators. And you can actually test surface mount ones as well. You can plug Dell ICs in here. With the SMDs, you just hold them against the board, press with your finger, you get a connection and the LEDs flash to show you if they are good working yeah you can put single in line eight pin ones and of course the little breadboard in the middle you can actually plug any op amps in here which have an unusual pin out connect the various test signals you want for example you see here all the various inverted and non-inverted inputs and outputs power ground so you can pretty much use this to test any sort of op amp and I use this regularly you've seen this on the video this actually worked very well and I've actually successfully used that to find faulty op amps especially in audio equipment I'm repairing so that's been very useful this one which I designed as well but it was based on another design from in fact a USB load on pcbway.com this is the upgraded version, multi-loading. You will have seen this quite a few times. So with this one, you can put the display board on here. It will show you the voltage, the current, the wattage. And also you can have a PD controller on here as well. So you can actually control PD power supplies with this. Again, you've seen me using this or in the more basic form. I just plug a USB analyzer in here, connect whatever I want to load and quite simply adjust the load here yeah and this will go up to about 140 watts so that's been handy yeah it's got stuff stuck on it but this was home built after all yeah and that's another one so i'll also give you the link to this one it's a very simple project very useful for loading usb but in fact you can load any power supply battery whatever power source up to 30 volts i think actually 32 volts with this and up to five amps so that's another one that's got quite a bit of use on the channel and of course this one this is almost infamous these days this is the fake mosfet detector both n type and p type and this has found so many fake mosfets now it's invaluable i don't think if you do the electronics repair you can easily get away without this little bit of kit yeah so again you can order these pcbs from pcbway.com shared projects but i'll link the video where we designed and use this as well and the great thing with this there's basically no active components on this yeah there's very little to blow up if you do something silly with it there's just some zedded diodes leds everything else is just resistors and big resistors and that is something you can't really buy yeah something to do the job this does you can't really buy so again i'll link in that one if you've not seen it i know a lot of you have seen it okay and then similar from this one was this one so this is the prototype of the destructive bipolar and for that matter mosfet tester so this actually tests the maximum current that you can pass through the mosfet and quite literally you just switch the switches adding one amp at a time if the mosfet fails before it reaches its rated current 
it's fake yeah so it will destroy fake MOSFETs I will say they'll go open or short circuit and the same with transistors N type and P type if it withstands the current up to the rated level it's fine so it only kills fake ones yeah this tester goes up to 10 amps I've actually ordered two versions of the PCB so these are in the same package with all the signal injector pens one is very much like this version with a PCB to replace all this lot and the other one is all surface mount so I made a front panel for all the switches okay the fuse holders are also on the front panel the power connections for your bench supply P and N type so they're all on there and the actual drive circuitry is on the other side all SMD yeah so that one's coming as well this is also proved very useful but what I did note with this in particular looking at data sheets we need more current this will sync up to about 10 amps I'm actually making an upgrade to this but it's not much change to what you see here and on the upgraded version you can also go to 20 amps or maybe 30 amps it'd be fairly simple to do that so that one is waiting PCBs but the prototype works really well I know again some of you guys have seen this in use on the channel and once more this is not something you can really buy yeah but especially because we now have I'm particularly repairing audio equipment but other equipment with obsolete transistors you can never be quite sure what you're buying so that's also a good one yeah which brings me on to this one so this is my prototype again this is the constant collector current gain tester so this measures the gain of bipolar transistors N or P type this is a very very simple device and in actual fact this doesn't need a PCB so this one again you guys have seen me using this with batches of transistors and getting very accurately grouped pairs or four of the same gain again you need that in some sort of circuit so that one we won't be going any further with because it's just so simple I mean you can see that's built just using terminal blocks a metal heat sink a couple of resistors yeah but again I'll link that one so if you're interested in building that one just look in the video description that leads me on to this project so this one is very much still work in progress it's a little bit on the back burner from my side of it okay but this is the automated MOSFET tester you saw Detlef and myself talking a lot about this one so this one is still in progress it just at the moment is on the back burner but this was a three-man project and at least one is still working on it so expect to see a newer version of this one soon okay I think the next version will test up to five amps but we're hoping to produce an ATX power supply based version that will plot curves and graphs and that will go up to well basically whatever power your ATX supply can provide on 12 volts okay so that's the automated MOSFET analyzer tester and that is still in progress so you will see more of this one in the future okay another one we built this is the uncle sweepy so this is the audio sweep generator but it generates more than that it makes sine waves at different frequencies drum effects and various things you might want to put into an amplifier and have them on loop basically okay so this one was completed this one works again I'll put the link in the video description as I recall my friend and colleague Carlos was going to 3d print a case for this which didn't happen so I'll ask Carlos again actually see if he'll do that be nice to put this in a little enclosure with just the screen and the one control which is a rotary encoder that's all we need and the connectors on the back okay so that one also worked really well one of the first projects I built from PCBWay was this one so this is the milliohm in fact 
micro meter okay this was a very simple design just a couple of op amps in there and it works really well okay five digit display i made my own kelvin probes you can see them here out of smd tweezers okay and this actually works as well and as accurately as my vc vc 480c so that's another really interesting project if you're looking for some cheap diy test gear it's proven and tested and works as well as this does in fact it has a higher resolution than this does because with this one you can connect a millivolt meter if you have one to here and get an extra decimal place again yeah and it already has one more decimal place than that one does so that's another really interesting one if you want to build it very simple circuit a couple of op amps some resistors that's about it really so again because it's such an old project now i will link that and you can have a look maybe you'd like to build one those of you who watch the channel regularly will know a little while ago we were talking about building this one so this is another highly accurate micro ohm meter okay we still intend to build this we need to order a lot of parts for this because it uses some quite unusual and esoteric components some very close tolerance components i know a lot of you are interested to see just how well this works because of the components it uses it's not quite so inexpensive to build it but i will do that so i'll get together what i need and we'll put this one together and give this one a go as well and just to conclude these projects i use a lot as this one so this is my rf frequency generator it goes actually from something like 10 kilohertz up into 250 megahertz or thereabouts and again you will see this quite a bit on my videos i especially use this when i'm testing things like oscilloscopes to see how they react will they actually run at their specified frequency rating yeah bandwidth so that's another one you'll see quite a bit you'll see this is battery powered as well okay so this one was based on a project which is already on pcbway.com on the shared projects and I made some modifications to this. So this one now is battery powered, rechargeable. It runs from a LiPo cell. And the front panel, you know, the actual panel, and the rear panel are actually made from PCB material, you can see. So these, again, we designed the panels and we put them onto pcbway.com so you can actually download the panels as well actually i mean bear in mind these were made to suit this little case which is something i found at the flea market but if they're of use to you you can download them i have another set of pcbs here as well so this is one i've not built yet this is a subwoofer tester okay we can see this is microcontroller based it has an lcd panel which fits on here I have quite a few of the parts actually for this one here now so again i think we'll build this and we'll have a look to see how well that works but you know what i've been nosing around on pcbway.com i'm going to show you just a few other things i found that may or may not be interesting and here we are so every now and then i like to have a look through the various projects on here so i normally look for test equipment projects things i think you guys will be interested in but i found this one so this is a solder fume extractor now quite a few of you have said i should be using one of these i would counter that with some other arguments but i'm not going to do that today so you can buy these things probably as cheaply as you could build this one actually but this is quite interesting because this is an electronics project okay micro computer or microcontroller uses commonly available parts filter a fan and this is 3d printed so this would be something if you guys are interested because i've not done this on the channel before carlos is the expert in this so if carlos is up for it we could do something like that if you're interested to see how it's done yeah there's a lot of information with this all the files are here i had a look circuit is very simple you can see that 
the PCB. So it's actually a Raspberry Pi Pico on this, which is the microcontroller. These are the LED PCBs. Okay. Luke even shows you how to assemble this, hot plates and all the rest of it. And goes on to assembling the main PCB. There's the module, Luke. Okay. And 3D printing. So are you guys interested in that sort of thing? If you are, let me know. And I will see if I can talk Carlos into it. We can build this. And that's something of a first on this channel, okay? Here's another project on PCBWay.com. So with these projects, you're seeing these are submitted by viewers, basically. You just join PCBWay.com, register, and then you can put your own designs on here. And you actually earn commission. So basically, if somebody orders this, if I order these PCBs, 10% of the cost goes to the author, okay? This is a very simple project it would appear, and this could be useful for me. So this is a speaker protector. Yeah, you can see that speaker protection. The guy shows a video so you can adjust this here. And at a certain wattage or voltage, it will just disconnect the speaker with the big relay here. So this up to 30 amps, which should handle up to 4,000 watt amplifiers. This is probably doing basically what the protection circuit does in an amplifier, but given the amount of amplifiers in unknown states that get connected to my speakers here, this could be rather useful. And for anybody else out there who's doing audio repair, because I've done it before, I've blown up my own speakers by connecting a faulty amplifier that was in for repair. Not done it for a while and not done it on this channel, but this would stop that. And it looks like such a simple device. I think I should build this. So again, what do you guys think? Then we have this one. So this is a little battery capacity tester, charger, discharger, built around an 80 mega 328. The typical displays we use two line okay you can see it there i have those displays around here i probably have some 80 megas around here as well everything else looks fairly commonplace easy to get your hands on okay source code for example is here so it looks like we have all the files this is a very old project in actual fact but simple to build i think often there's as much to learn by building these things as going out and buying one so what you guys think of that again let me know so what you're interested in seeing are the projects which i'll order from pcb with the pcbs and we'll get these built and see how they go okay guys so there was a quick look around pcbway.com shared projects we have a few interesting things to get on with there i like looking around here from time to time because you never know what you might find somebody may have uploaded you to there but I'm sure there is plenty more, so if any of you guys are interested, have a good look, see if you can find anything on there interesting that we might be wanting to build. And then all you have to do really is, well, talk me into it, yeah? So feel free, have a look around there. So we'll leave it at that for today. Hope you enjoyed that and look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.